Good morning and welcome to Rose Red Homestead. This is our third video in our uh, series on Asparagus Week, so this will conclude the week for us. And um, today's video is going to be filmed over the span of several days as we use our dried asparagus that we uh, showed in previous videos. And so we'll be doing a series of dishes. And this is all about food security. Thanks for joining our community this morning. We appreciate it. And if uh, you would like to help spread the word on the things that we do on this channel, please like the videos that you do like and share them and then subscribe. We would love to have you along on our adventures. So we'll get started on this in just a moment. One of the easiest things to do with uh, dried asparagus is a quick scramble, and that's what we're going to be doing this morning. Now, notice here what I have. I've got uh, some other freeze-dried uh, things that we have done over the past several months. This is whole eggs that I have powdered, so we're going to use these whole eggs. I have them um, reconstituting in this bowl right here. I've been stirring them around. And then we also have a combination of sweet peppers and those are just finishing dehydrating right now. In fact, I'm gonna drain them right now. These are some chives right out of our herb garden outside, and this is the asparagus. These, this is four spears of the freeze-dried asparagus that I have cut, and when you cut freeze-dried asparagus, you need to be careful, otherwise it just crumbles. And so I very carefully sawed the uh, asparagus with a serrated blade so that I could get these in these little mini spears. This is some bread that we made in a previous video on our series on uh, First Lessons in Bread Baking. So we're going to have some toast. I have some pieces of ham over there already cooked. So we're going to go ahead and do this scramble. In go the peppers. In go the chives, and the asparagus is, it took less than three minutes for these to reconstitute when they were um, cut in these is little um, lengths, and so they're very soft, uh, they're not too soggy, so I'm going to put those in as well, and very carefully I'm going to stir this around. So isn't this a beautiful scramble? Now to reconstitute the eggs, I took a half a cup of egg powder and a half a cup of water. It's a one to one ratio and two tablespoons of the powder equals one egg. So um, I'm not a big egg eater. This is mostly for Jim, but I'll have a bite because I love this. My frying pan is cold. I've sprayed it with the, with the spray oil and it has a little dollop of our ghee right in the center and I put this in cold. <clears throat> now I'm going to take this over to the stove and turn the heat on. While these are cooking I'm going to do a couple of pieces of toast and we'll be back with the plated breakfast in just a few minutes. Here we are. This is Jim's breakfast. This is mine, and I'm just going to take a little taste right now. I have added salt and pepper, fresh ground pepper, and I want to get a bite of that asparagus to see how it is. I can't, I can't tell the difference. It is as good as if I used fresh asparagus in this. It is just um, warmed, still a little bit crunchy, but not dry crunchy like the freeze-dried is. It's just absolutely perfect. So I hope you try this. Thanks, and we'll see you with our next meal. I'm just home from work, and actually, the last hour and a half before I left to come home, I was sitting in the dental chair. So Jim says my mouth is still a little bit crooked but I'm tired and my mouth is sore and so I want something just quick and easy for dinner tonight. So I went right out into the garage and picked up one of our meals in bags and we have done a video on this. And this will be so easy. It's just wonderful to be able to reach in this bag and pull out everything that is needed for this meal. And what we're going to do, which what sounded really good for me, was uh, chicken and rice soup. 
So this is some home canned chicken soup that I did. This is two years old. So we're gonna open it and uh, just dump it right in the saucepan here. Now, when I open something that I have pressure canned, and especially this is two years old, here's what I do. The first thing I do is listen to be sure that when I pop this open, the air gets sucked in because right now there's a vacuum. And then I do the air test and then the smell test, two things. And then I will put it in this pot and we will be sure that it boils, which it will, for at least 10 minutes. Because if there should be any botulism toxin in here, which I do not in this world believe that there is, but as a safety precaution, boiling for 10 minutes uh, completely destroys the toxin and it's okay. So first I'm gonna listen. Okay, I heard that sound, so that's a good sign. The next thing is I'm going to smell, and it smells wonderful. All of the Italian seasoning is on the top. Then I'm just going to dump the contents. Now this has carrots, chicken chunks, onions, and then some really wonderful flavoring. So there's what it looks like in the pot. And because we never can uh, rice, we never process rice when we uh, can food because it's just dangerous to do that. I always add the rice later. I'm going to add a fresh lemon. Sometimes when soup has been sitting on my pantry shelf for a couple of years, just a lemon slice will freshen it up. And uh, this will be just enough for Jim and me. And then because now I have dehydrated asparagus, what I'm going to do is add some asparagus, some dehydrated asparagus to this. Just pull out several spears here. And this will really make it yummy. So in order to do that, I'm just going to take my kitchen shears and snip it into about inch long pieces. And now I'm just gonna put this on the stove. We're going to let it simmer until the asparagus is done and the rice is done. And we'll be back when we're ready to serve up a nice, uh, a nice soup for supper for someone who's been to the dentist. See you in a few minutes. The soup has been simmering and I took that opportunity to change out of my work clothes. And look how wonderful it looks. That rice has thickened it up the asparagus has rehydrated big old chunks of chicken. It just looks so hearty. So I'm gonna dish up a couple of bowls and then we'll do a little taste test with the asparagus and see what we think. Oh, looks like Jim got the lemon. You win, honey. Okay. Okay, let's check out that asparagus. This is really a good soup, and we have a video on this chicken soup. Well, I can taste the lemon. It has really freshened up the soup, and the asparagus tastes wonderful. It's just still skinny, but it's rehydrated enough that it's not tasting um, fibrous, it's nice and soft. So this is our second meal and we'll be back with our next meal. Hi everyone and welcome back. We are going to finish up this video today by uh, doing two meals. And um, if you've ever looked online for asparagus recipes, you probably know that there are literally hundreds of ways that you can do asparagus. But not very many of them talk about ways that you can use freeze-dried asparagus or dehydrated asparagus. And so I was wanting something just a little bit different that perhaps you haven't seen before. And so that's what both of these are. Uh, the first thing that I did was that I took about, uh, by handfuls, about one handful of the dehydrated and about one handful of the freeze-dried along with the stem ends that um, I showed earlier. And I put them in a blender and I made asparagus powder. Now this asparagus powder is fabulous. Um, and both of them, 
powdered exceptionally well. I would not hesitate if you have a dehydrator to dehydrate asparagus if you are going to powder it because it works just fine. And asparagus powder can be used in soups, in smoothies, in all kinds of things that I'm going to show you today. So this powdered asparagus is what makes up the first meal that we're going to talk about today and that is asparagus soup in a jar. Now I put it in this extra large jar not intentionally I wasn't sure that it would fit in the 8 ounce jar but it would have fit just perfectly and when we're finished with uh, this series of videos I'm going to powder everything that is left because I have really discovered how wonderful asparagus powder is. So I want to tell you exactly what is in here and this is a soup mix. And so it starts on the bottom with a fourth of a cup of dry milk, non-fat dry milk powdered. And then a third of a cup of the asparagus powder. And that is followed by a thin layer which is a, a fourth of a cup of potato flakes. Now the reason that I'm using potato flakes they act as a thickener. So if you choose not to use potato flakes, you can use something else. I have powdered potatoes that I can also use, but I wanted to try out these flakes. And then on the top, um, let me actually take the lid off for you so that you can kind of see, there are some seasonings on the top. I have, um, a, I have a teaspoon of the chicken bouillon and a teaspoon of onion flakes a fourth of a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a fourth of a teaspoon of Italian dressing. And so this is going to make up our soup. Now what I'm going to use as the base for the soup is some of my home canned chicken bone broth. Now you don't have to have bone broth, you can also use four cups of water, or you could just make up some bouillon of your own choosing. So I'm gonna open this now because I need a little bit of this broth for our second meal. I am going to pour off a half a cup there. Okay, give it the smell test and it smells just fine. So, and there is a little bit of fat at the top like there is when you do chicken bone broth and that doesn't bother us at all. So I'm just going to set aside a half a cup for our other recipe and then in this pot I'm going to put the chicken broth and then watch how easy this is. I am just going to dump. Ta-da! There's our soup. And we'll mix that up and heat it uh, for just a few minutes until everything is all mixed together. Now, um, there may be some things in here that are a little bit too uh, fibrous, so we're gonna run it through a strainer when it uh, gets all cooked, which is going to trap the onions in here too, dried onion chunks. Okay, so this is going to be our asparagus soup. And I'm going to put it on the stove and let it get going. So that was really quick and easy and when it's done um, I'm, we're going to put it in these bowls that look perfect for asparagus soup. But I'm going to show you what we're going to do that makes it all so ever so much um, fancier. I have right here some creme fraiche. Now what is creme fraiche? It sounds French and that's because it is. And um, this is a, a mixture of heavy whipping cream and two tablespoons of buttermilk and I'm going to mix some up here in just a minute and show you. But because it ferments, um, it thickens up and it is more mild than sour cream and it is fabulous. You can put it on so many things. We're going to decorate our soup with a little bit of this on the top and then swirl it around to make it look really, really pretty. But uh, creme fraiche is so easy to make. So I just have a bowl right here. And because I've already taken one cup of this 36% um, heavy whipping cream uh, to make this, I know that I have one cup left in here. So I'm gonna dump the whole thing in. And you can see how lovely and thick that is, but it's not as thick as this because this is the creme fraiche and it has fermented. Then this is just cultured buttermilk. And be sure, um, if you're going to do this, that you get the cultured buttermilk because that has, that has the live cultures in it and it will then ferment. Now most recipes call for about two tablespoons of this buttermilk. Um, I'm going to put three because I want it to be just a little bit stronger 
than usual. And then I'm just going to take a spoon and stir it around. Notice the difference. So this is much thicker. This has not fermented yet. And so what we will do is I'm just going to put this tea towel over the top of it and I'm going to leave it just like that for 24 hours and that's all there is to it. That is how easy it is to make creme fraiche. So we'll be back when our soup is ready. This took only about five or six minutes. I brought it to a simmer, let it simmer for a couple of minutes and then I'm just going to, depending on how smooth you want the soup, you can strain it, you can do an immersion blender thing here whatever works for you. And now, what we are going to do is take a little bit of creme fraiche, and I don't know for sure how to pronounce that, and we're just gonna dollop it on the top. And this will help make the soup more creamy than it is already. And you can do whatever kind of decoration. I always get self-conscious about trying to do a decoration. I see these online and they look so gorgeous and I try them and it looks like a preschooler with a picture that goes on a refrigerator. And they just take their little fancy wands and do this sort of thing to it and it just looks so gorgeous. Okay, and then what we can also do here is to take some of our dried asparagus and break off the tip ends and put those right on the top. Oh, there you have asparagus soup or creamed asparagus soup because it does have the milk solids in it and then we've decorated it with creme fraiche. Um, cream of asparagus soup from powdered asparagus. How easy is that? How cool it would be to have a whole series of these on our shelves just ready to dump into a bowl with a quart of chicken broth and there we have a meal. So we're gonna clear this away we might eat the soup, and then we'll come back with our second meal. Well, I am really excited to share this meal with you because it, it, I'm doing something brand new that I've not ever done before, and I had to practice. But take a look at this. I have for us to look at some fresh pasta made from asparagus powder. This is asparagus pasta. And so I know that there's spinach pasta, I know that there's tomato pasta, but this is asparagus pasta. Now we're gonna do some videos in, oh, just three or four weeks on how to make fresh pasta. I'm still not an expert, but boy, am I having fun learning how to do this. Mine are still a little bit too thick, but they work out just fine. And we're going to pop them over there in the boiling water. Now, as you know, you always, always, always put pasta directly into boiling water and um, boiling salted water. And I have my pot over here and it, my pot is already boiling, so those will go in in just a minute. I'm going to put about, and this is gonna blow some of you away, but um, for this batch of pasta, I, um, I did not put any salt in. So these are saltless. I now make my pasta with salt and it's altogether better. So I'm trying to salt up the water to add some additional salt. So I'm going to go put this in the water and then we'll put the pasta in and I'll explain to you what we're going to do. Now this pasta, this pasta will go in frozen and still it's only going to take three or four minutes. So I have to work quickly and I'm probably going to do most of it off camera, but I'm going to show you first what I'm going to do. So this is a heavy duty frying pan. I have about a tablespoon, maybe a little bit more olive oil in the bottom. I have some of our basil. I have a fresh basil and I'm going to take about half of this. It's four different kinds of basil, but you can, you don't have to use four different kinds. Um, I had to use four different kinds to get enough leaves to do this with. So I'm going to put about half of the basil in. And this is about four uh, diced garlic cloves. And then I'm going to put just a pinch of red pepper in because I want it just a little bit spicy. And then I'm going to let those cook for about a minute. Then I'm going to add this half a cup of chicken broth and let it cook down for just a little bit. And so we're going to have a little sauce going on here. Uh, not a fancy sauce, but here is the amazing part. This pasta, uh, with, with good pasta, you also want a really good um, sauce to go with it. And so this is Pecorino Romano cheese, and it is not cheap. And so when I get all of this stuff hot, 
um, then I'm going to uh, drain the pasta, move it into here, and then we'll put half of this cheese on the top, stir it up, and then the other half of the basil will go on the top. And then we'll move it to the serving dishes and we'll sprinkle the rest of the cheese on each of our serving dishes. Now I'll put the recipe, both recipes from today, down below uh, the description on the video. And then a little bit later we're going to do the um, videos on fresh pasta. I hope you'll look forward to those. I'm just having a blast doing them. It's so much fun. All right, I'm gonna drop these in and be all ready. And when we come back, we'll have our, our dinner. Pasta is ready. I have drained the pasta, never rinse, it's drained, and um, it's back in the pan. And so now what I'm going to do is, here's what is in the frying pan. This is the combination of the um, garlic and half the basil and a few little red pepper flakes. So I am going to just dump this over the pasta right here. Let me get around here so you can see what's going on. And now we're going to toss it with about half to three quarters of the cheese and the rest of the basil. So we have some cooked basil and some fresh basil mixed in and just toss that around. Oh my gosh, it smells heavenly. And we're ready to serve it. And my pasta is, the noodles are very long. A little bit more cheese on both. These flavors, the smells are just whew, amazing. So what fun meals we can make with asparagus dehydrated and freeze-dried, and then um, using it in a whole number of different ways, in including some real versatility if we make asparagus powder. We were going to end the video without a taste test, but we decided to come back for just a little minute so that I can describe the taste here. This pasta is probably some of the best I have ever eaten, really, even though it is novice pasta and it's a little bit thick. And the soup, we decided to eat both of them together in a meal. It's probably, you know, you wouldn't ever do this at home, but since we have this food, we're not gonna let it go to waste. But it turns out that it's a very nice balance. This is much more uh, bland flavor. It's very flavorful, but this has a bite to it because of the few pepper flakes that I put in. Also, the, the basil comes through really, really strong, but the really amazing thing is this cheese. Now, we usually don't buy really super expensive cheese, but we did this time because I wanted to try it. The Pecorino Romano is salty, so it adds a perfect amount of salt. We didn't have to add any salt at all, and it is very tangy, it's spicy, and uh, the noodles are al dente, and so it is just a perfect, beautiful meal. Thank you so much for joining us on Asparagus Week. This has been really fun for us. Hope you have enjoyed it, and we will see you again soon.